It's certainly one of the deepest holes that Del Bosque has found himself in as the coach of this side, which have been strolling their way through world and European football these last uh, four or five years or so. But it's certainly not going to go to a back three. They're going to stick with that same shape. Pedro out on that right-hand side. I think he's going to make more forward runs. Neymar gets one more goal. He can win the golden boot for this tournament. He's got four. Torres has got five. But Neymar has one more assist. Really can't compare the performances between the two players. Can you, Torres' goals came in that game against Tahiti. As Neymar scored some really important ones here. Great technical goals as well, Neymar. A lot of hype surrounding him on the way into the tournament, and you have to say he's delivered. Here is Aspilicueta. I'm afraid as commentators, we can't use Dave. So it's Aspilicueta. There we go. On the top left there, just to check if you're recently tuned in on the uh, two teams out on the pitch at the moment. Brazil unchanged again, predictably. They've only just made that one change in the whole tournament when Paulinho was injured and they brought in Hernanes. But that's it. The other ten, there all the time. The other thing that you expect Spain to do is press the ball. That's what they're good at doing. That's why they've been world champions, European champions, because not only do they play well when they've got it, they press the ball all around the field. They haven't been able to do that here. Brazil are full of it as well, and there's a third goal, Fred again! He side-footed it in like a pass! It's a brilliant finish. This time he drifts outside the fullback, the substitute. That's Billy Cueta, and bends it with his right foot into the far corner past Casillas. But again, the intensity in which Brazil won the ball back, and they tried to counter. Spain have got no answer to it at the moment. There it is, they win the ball back. Center half doesn't deal with it. Create an overload against the fullback. He can't get tight enough. And a really good finish. Yes, it goes between Aspilicueta's leg. Casillas probably should do better. Yeah, he should have done, shouldn't he? Casillas, it looked like he should have been tipping that round the post. He's not had the greatest game, probably. At fault partly for both of Fred's goals. Yeah, this is a carnival atmosphere now among the Brazilian fans who will believe that this team might be going places. Well, if we said it, they play with the intensity. They've also played with a flair. They've played with an aggression. And they've defended well all around the field. And I've never really seen Fred at his best, but he's certainly played well in this game. He's won headers in his own box, he's looked threatening every time he's had it in the opponent's box, and he scored two goals. The last time Spain conceded three goals was against Portugal, 37 matches ago in 2010. Portugal won that by four goals to nil. And this is in danger of becoming something of a humiliation for the Spanish. Certainly is. When you're winning all the time, when you're playing brilliantly controlling games, you have a belief that you're the best, you're invincible. That's been taken away from him this first 50 minutes or so. You've looked anything but invincible. Now we've got a chance to bend this ball into the space. Javi. They need something and quickly. Xavi does bend it in. Brazil. Defend it well. Came out to Pedro. Jordi Alba. Sergio Ramos had come forward from the back. So had Gerard Piquet. And you know who headed it out the box when it came in from that free kick. None other than Fred again. Back defending. Great defensive header. And by the way... Brazil have now played in five Confederations Cup finals and scored a total of 19 goals. That 
this tournament a little bit more than the Olympics, don't they? The Stanley won't like some matches that no team's ever gone on from winning the Confed Cup and won the World Cup the next year. I hope to break that pattern. They haven't won this yet, but they're well on the way, aren't they? Marcelo. He's the man at the moment. Great goal from him inside of his right boot. And if Manuel Pellegrini, the new Manchester City manager, really does want Fred, I think the price just went up. I still think there's better players than Fred. Yes, he's had a good tournament. Yes, he's played well today, but you ask me, is Aguero a better player than Fred? I think Aguero is a better player. He might be playing alongside Fred. We'll see. Tevez has left, of course. Carlos Tevez has gone to Juventus from Manchester City in recent days. That player that we saw earlier, Cavani, doesn't look as though he's going to Man City at the moment. I think somebody is. <laughs> somebody pretty big as well. Ooh. Spain again. The passing broken up. And this is proving something of a chastening experience. And Brazil here showing the rest of the world the template to beat Spain. To be a great side, you have to be able to put up with the physical side of the game. And most times I've seen Spain play, they have been able to cope with that. They haven't been able to cope with the physical side of the game here today. Jesus Navas replaces Juan Mata. Not a good day for the Chelsea man. Manchester City's new winger comes on. He was very good as a substitute last time out. I must wonder what he has to do to get a start. Just looking at the formation now. What are Spain going to do? Just see Busquets go back into that centre-back role for the moment. Now on Navas play. He's going to play high and wide out on that right-hand side. Pedro now coming to the left. Navas, by the way, has doubled his salary, reportedly, going to Manchester City. Well, what a turn up for the book here. I don't think anyone was predicting this. Fed White here for Aspiliqueta. Oscar back defending. Brazil energized by their own success. Neymar looking to break through. They are absolutely bubbling with confidence at the moment, the Brazilians. Which looks at times as though they've got an extra man on the field. Never said that when you watch Spain play. Here's Navas, the old fashioned right winger. Now, was he fouled there? He was. Penalty by Marcelo, just caught him. Referee had no doubts, pointing straight to the spot. So bringing Navas on has worked straight away for Spain. A good switch of play. Marcelo defends it quite well to start with, but certainly a foul. His right foot catches. Yes, Navas makes the most of it. As soon as he was touched, he was always going to go down. Yeah, he throws his arms up in the air. A silly challenge from Marcelo. Always likely to do that, as is David Luiz. They're the liabilities, I think, in this Brazilian back four. Has to be said, Spain have had a few problems from the penalty spot, not in the shootout, but in ordinary play over the last four years. They've missed 9 out of 22 in competitive games. As Sergio Ramos is getting the job here. Leave it to me, he says. How Spain need this. On. Well, it's one of those nights for Spain in the semi-final. They scored all their penalties, brilliant penalties they were too. Ramos, one of the penalty takers in that, just passes it wide. That was the chance to get back into the game, well, at least give them a bit of hope. Julio Cesar conducts the orchestra. He made a save earlier on in the tournament to deny Diego Forlan of Uruguay. Didn't have to make a save there, and it's been that.
kind of night for Spain. That might have been a route back. Might have been. Oscar plays it wide here to Hulk. Flag is up. Oscar won't count here. Dangerous play from Spain, though. No real pressure on the ball. Two players making forward runs. The first one was offside. Then Oscar tried to... Well, you're talking inches as well. PK and Busquets back in there. Sergio Ramos was one of the nominees for the uh, golden ball for best player in the tournament. I think that one's out the window. So was Luis Suarez as well. Yes. Can't quite see. So was Iniesta. Likewise, I would think. So could be Neymar. Could well be Neymar. He's the player that's is at the tournament. And he's got problems, Del Bosque. Everything's gone really well for him over the last few years. Suddenly there's a challenge to this Spanish side. Andres Iniesta looks to thread one through. But absolutely nothing, but nothing is going Spain's way. Talking of Barcelona players, Leon Messi invites some of the best players from around the world for an exclusive one-off game at Soldier Field in Chicago next Saturday, 6.55 Eastern on ESPN. Messi and friends live on ESPN and you'll watch ESPN app. Iniesta looks for a 1-2 with Torres, but Brazil are having none of that. Luis broke it up. Neymar's in behind again here. And they haven't been able to deal with him. Or Fred. And to some extent, Hulk too. Well, that sums out. Iniesta did well in midfield to break away from a couple of challenges. But the two midfield players chased him back and put his next pass under pressure. Torres didn't do well enough against David Luiz. Pedro to Iniesta. Just go back to the point. Then David Luiz steps out from the back. Neymar makes one run and the two centre-halves don't see it until it's too late. That's been the difference between the two sides. It's been an immense golf. The question will be asked, how good is this Brazil side? Hulk got a chance here. Goalkeeper, did he get a hand to the outside? The box don't think so. They're gambling now, Spain, on trying to hold a high line. It's just a simple ball played in behind. Hulk was always going to get there first. There's no energy about Spain at the moment. Here is again, ball plate square. Holt gets in behind Jordi Alba. I'm not sure what part of the body came off. Wow. See, his can't go with his hands, obviously. Veer is on. David Veer, another player being linked with a possible move to the English Premier League in the shape of Tottenham Hotspur, but uh, can't agree a fee at the moment. Torres is off. Here's Navas. Likes a shot. It did deflect off a Brazilian player. That's why Julio Cesar tried to make every effort to keep that in play and not go for the corner. Well, it's given them a bit of dynamism. Navas on the penalty. They're driving past a couple of challenges. Rubio will play right through the middle, you imagine. Xavi to take it. PK with the header won't be a problem for. Julio Cesar with this move across London to Arsenal coming up for a modest fee of, we read, about $3 million. That's all. Not bad for a guy who's won five titles in Italy. Everything's gone according to plan for this man here. Scolari. Mm. It wasn't long ago he stormed out of a press conference after a 2-2 draw in a friendly with Chile, being asked whether he was prepared to step down. No comment, he said, this is all a joke. Got up and walked out. Different mood now. Is he going to do it all over again for Brazil, just as he did in 2002? It was this day, 11 years ago, Scolari won the World Cup for Brazil in Yokohama. He said that he had better players on that side. What he's learnt now is that he's got to get the balance right between creativity 
aggression, tactical understanding, and on the evidence of this tournament, we certainly get in there. Well, they've won every game, and they're winning this one as well, handsomely too. There's uh, Sepp Blatter, the president of FIFA. By the way, the Brazilian president, Dilma Rousseff, has not come to this game in the current political climate, and FIFA's response to that is they understand. Very good of them. It is, isn't it? He was under a bit of pressure in the first half, and that's died off the referee. His early tap was flying in from both sides, particularly the Brazilian players. You have to earn the right to play. Most coaches around the world will say that before the teams go out. Brazil have earned the right to play, Spain haven't. They've been knocked off the ball too easily. Haven't played with enough intensity right at the start. Try to play out from the back and kept them getting caught. Marcelo gave away the penalty kick. They've got their all-time record goal scorer on. David Villa. far from a regular starter these days for Spain and it might be that Vicente Del Bosque has to do a lot of thinking about his squad going forward with next summer in mind he have to make some big decisions as well he's getting that little bit older they're doing well at under 21 level see a bit of their under 20s they look a good side as well a lot of talent Spanish teams. Thiago Alcantara got a hat-trick in the under-21 final. Recently, Isco, Bunain, etc. Maybe even David De Gea, the Manchester United goalkeeper, can force his way into the squad. Paulinho. Another interesting run from Neymar. up to the reputation of all those who've worn that famous number 10 shirt for Brazil. Pedro is Villa. Got a hat-trick in his only start of the tournament against Tahiti. You see the good tactical play from Brazil again. Dani Alves went tight, was taken infield. As soon as he did that, Gustavo just stepped into the right back position so he could keep Brazil. Defensive plan balanced. Here's Neymar again. Marcelo had got him behind. It could be another one here. French waiting in the middle. Oh, it was a wasteful. Surely he didn't try and score here. Excellent play from Brazil. Again, Spain try and play a high line or play square. It's level when the ball's played. Now he's got to cross it. It was close to criminal, wasn't it, Stuart, that? So, <laughs> got to get it across to Fred. Pedro, and the main goal scorer in the World Cup qualifiers for Spain. They're not certain to make it to the World Cup finals. Hot favourites, Iniesta. Blocked on the way through, Jordi Alba tries to thread one through, and still nothing doing. And once again we saw it, Danny Alves dragged into midfield, Gustavo just stepping into right back. It's a really important player for them, Gustavo. The question that hangs in the air, or the questions, how good are this Brazil, and is this just a blip for Spain, or something more significant? If there was ever a time to play Spain, as a Brazilian team, today was the day. You've got a massive crowd behind you, the whole nation behind you. Spain have played 120 minutes in searing heat in the semi-final. It was at times outplayed by Italy. It was the right time to go and press them and make it difficult for them. And that's exactly what they've done. But they've done it really well. And then they've played their football in these moments here. Neymar again here. Trying to get Hulk in, Jordi Alba. And even now, right on the edge of their own penalty area, 
They're being pressed high up the pitch. Why would Brazil stop doing that? It's worked a treat. Here's Marcelo. In towards Fred again. Spanish defence looking fully stretched every time they're attacked. And that was often the case with Italy the other day too. Pedro. Oh, nearly. Villa was arriving. He knew where that ball was coming. Certainly did. Pico started that move. Obviously, he ran forward as well. It's too easy now for Brazil to play through them. Got to say, this is a terrific performance from Brazil. Oscar. This time, Casillas is quickly off his line. So that's a foul by Dani Alves, and he's committed too many of those now not to have been booked. They've got away with one or two things, haven't they? The ref's been a little lenient. Navas. Taking on Marcelo. Told you he liked to shot. Just dropped his shoulder, trying to get past Marcelo. And has defended a little bit better today. Tip when the ball's been in front of him, but here's the penalty miss. And here's a poor one, isn't it, from Sergio Ramos. Not looking at the ball, he's looking at the goalkeeper. He tried to send him the wrong way with the eyes, didn't he? A bit like the look of it there. Didn't work. Spain, by the way, have only lost four competitive games in the last seven years against Northern Ireland and Sweden back in 2006 in European Championship qualifiers, against the USA in the Confederations Cup semi-final four years ago, and against Switzerland on their way to winning the World Cup in 2010. That's it. But never have they been beat like this or played against like this, where the Intense pressure of Brazil has stopped them passing the ball. They've looked ragged, looked short of ideas, no athleticism to run in behind. Pedro for Spain. Jordi Alba, a couple of goals already in the tournament from left back for him, but one or two harrowing moments defensively. Now then, here they come again, Neymar and Fred, the old firm. Oh, just taken out of it by PK. And it's red. It's red. It's a straight red for PK. Well, I think he's going away from goal. It's a lunging challenge. It's a foul. Yes. I'm not sure I would have sent him off for that. And that's what the players, the Spanish players, are moaning about. He's going away from goal. There were players getting back. Was it a goal scoring opportunity? It's a 1v1 situation. He now takes his touch wider. That's a poor challenge. But is it red? Because, as you said, they seem to be covering players. The ball's going away from goal. It's a foul. Wow. I would say it's a professional foul. And what I mean by that is there's no intent to play the ball whatsoever. And when it's those situations, I think you can almost send a player off for that. Maybe he's just seen that as violent conduct, pure and simple. Gerard Piquet sent off there. Shakira, his partner, they've had a baby son this year, but uh, that's not something she turned up expecting to see today. A chastening day, this, for Spain. It's just turned into a nightmare, this game, for them all the way round. It was far too easy for Brazil to get Neymar in a 1v1 situation. Brazil won the ball back, they played a long ball forward, 2v1, Fred chest the ball down. Too easy for him to get the ball on his chest and play it into Neymar. Then he starts to run with the ball. There's no recovery runs from the Spanish midfield players, and suddenly PK knew he was going to be beaten for pace. I think Neymar wants that golden boot. I think he's saying, I'm having this, of course, David Luiz always fancies these free kicks. Remember the goal against Italy and Buffon, who goes into this mm. near corner here. His name are Good, not quite good enough. But he has had a terrific tournament. Oh. Yes, would have just about got there, I would imagine. Quite get enough whip on it, top spin.
Thiago Silva winning the header across Brazil. He was one of those players who had that big disappointment at the Olympic Games in London last summer when Mexico beat Brazil to the gold medal. They still can't win the Olympics. Oscar was part of that team as well, and Marcelo and Hulk got a late goal. Neymar too. But it looks like this might be a totally different story. Scalari has been saying, if we win this, we get the whole nation behind the team. We have renewed belief. Doesn't mean they're the finished article, far from it, but um, it, it does send a message, doesn't it? it? certainly does. I wonder if Alexi in the studio is still thinking that it might be a good thing for Brazil to lose this game. He's certainly not now, I don't think. Navas making the round. I could see Alexi's of course, point yes. about that, but... Um, Absolutely right. But there's Gustavo again. Unsung hero, ball played through, sees the danger, gets out there, defends it really well with the sliding challenge. Xavi to take it for Spain. Luis, mop of hair flapping in the wind as he heads it away. Iniesta. It's a good-looking ball, Villa, and then Sergio Ramos again. Puts the effort roughly in the same place, he put the penalty. Jadson's going to get his first involvement of the tournament here. Player who spent seven and a half years with Shakhtar Donetsk in Europe, now playing for Sao Paulo, and it's Hulk who is coming up. He's been subbed in every game so far but uh, you wouldn't say it a bad game today well, he started it off with that cross didn't he the first couple of minutes when he bent the ball in all sorts of problems and on this occasion the crowd have appreciated what he's done for the team so does his manager they played with a bit of a snarl on their face at times Brazil but uh, there's been plenty of other very very good football as well they hit six past Spain in 1950. They might have got six today. It has been a thrashing in terms of the football that both teams have played. It's a physical contest. There's only been one winner. In terms of football, there's only been one winner. So, tactically as well, Scolari got the better of Del Bosque so far. Just look like they've wanted it so much more as well, Brazil. Even the way that national anthem was belted out by everyone in the stadium, most of all the players themselves. You don't always see that as well. It's going to be a free kick. Looks like Neymar is now playing behind Fred, and Oscar's gone out to the left hand side bit of freedom just to roam and find a bit of space on the ball when they're counter-attacking oh, just as his toes stamped on by one of his new teammates at Barcelona Pedro by the way he uh, will wear a Barcelona shirt for the first time I think it's August the third they're playing his old club Santos in a high-profile friendly at the uh, camp now just a reminder that Spain are down to ten players with Gerard Piquet getting a red card. Straight red, too. Means that Spain can't really press the ball high up the field. It's damage limitation now. Here's Andres Iniesta. Those two. Xavi, those two. Unable to be the big influences they so often are for Spain. Next Sunday at 3 o'clock, Eastern Major League Soccer is back with Chicago Fire against Sporting Kansas City, live on ESPN, and watch ESPN the app. Iniesta, plays it across here to Jordi Alba. Luis sometimes criticised as an 
indisciplined defender for all his talent, but he's been solid enough back there today for Brazil. Jadson. Dani Alves, he's going to enjoy this when he goes back to the Barcelona locker room in a couple of weeks' time. I certainly will. There might be a bit of banter, might there? <laughs> there wasn't any banter a little while ago between Pedro and Neymar. Played in towards the near post, and Fred was there again, looking for his hat-trick this time. Just didn't get his touch quite right when it came across to him. Wanted to sweep it into his path to get the shot away. Just had to stop his run, which allowed the defender to get back in. He's not happy entirely, is he, Scolari? I think he wants the perfect 10 out of 10 today. By the way, in the past, Ronaldo and Romario have both scored hat-tricks in Confederations Cup final on the same one. A 6-0 win over Australia back in 97. Dani Alves offside this time. Spain at the moment have got the look of a side who'd quite like to get on the plane sometime soon and go home. It's an impossible. That ball needed to be played first time by Dani Alves when it came out to him. The run of Jadson, but when you're down to 10 men and 3 0 down, you've been totally outplayed. Looking like a confident side. Does this give Brazil more confidence going into the World Cup final, or does it make Spain worry about the next year ahead? Well, I think it makes them examine where they are, Spain, and whether they need to tweak things a little, maybe fast-track a couple of the youngsters. As football evolves, same systems, the same style of play, doesn't win all the time. A little er eras of... That great bit of play again from Gustavo. And he's done superbly well. Neymar and Fred are there. Neymar keeps going and going and going. And in the end, the door is closed. Just. That's Billy Quaid that came back from that right back position. He did really well to get there, I think. Two centre halves were beaten. Busquets now playing as a centre half. He couldn't pass it either because Fred was offside. Via. Spain playing almost for their pride, you sense now. The first time is that they've been challenged physically as well. All sides just drop off Spain, allow them to play, and then try and defend in their own third. Get numbers back. Brazil have pressed them, shown a real physical threat. There is that challenge from. Billy Quater as he got back. One of the guys who covers Marseille apparently said on the radio that he would eat a rat if Aspil Equator ever won a cap for Spain. Um, well, he has. So <laughs> I don't know what's happened with his diet. <laughs> it's a crazy thing to do. Neymar and Fred again, those two seem to have a real chemistry developing. Fred 2, Neymar 1 today, Stuart. Yeah, and the fact that he's playing behind Fred and playing those little 1-2s against a very flat, high defensive line of Spain. It does mean that they can play those 1-2s and get in, have that good understanding. And here is the first goal from Fred. There's the striker's goal. And this is the good finish, bending it past. I think the Casillas that should save it. But it's not just been his goals, it's been his all-round game. And those two have had a great understanding, as you just mentioned. Standing ovation for Fred, who's been one of the players of the tournament. He's having a wonderful purple patch for Brazil. He didn't rip up too many trees at Lyon in France. He might be going to England, might. For Manchester City, Joe to replace him. He's already scored twice from the bench in the tournament. A player who did go to Manchester City and flopped pretty badly there. He also played for Everton, didn't he, for a while? Like, mm. Played out on the left-hand side. So plenty of a... congratulations. Quite rightly so. Villa to Spain. 
And there's a chance for Pedro, and denied by Julio Cesar. Fingertip job. A good save, I think it was a little push in that. And the Elvis got caught under the ball and was just pushed that a little bit further. He's created the chance, that's what the Brazilian players are moaning at. It's the right place to hit it from Pedro, with his left foot. Xavi to play it in, Sergio Ramos attacking it. Once a corner, he's not going to get it. Here's that save from Cesar. Had a fairly decent season at QPR. Despite them being relegated. Well, it wasn't his fault, was it? I think uh, some of the guys in front of him should shoulder much of the blame for that. Where do we go from here? Mm. One of those days. Well, he'll probably try and say Del Bosque. And fatigue from the other game against Italy. Here's Luis Gustavo. Marcelo attacking. Joe waiting in the middle. What a day this is for Brazil. Playing with a bit of a swagger as well now. Navas. Look at that again. Paulinho racing back to get the challenge in. Those two midfield players have just been excellent. You can't have creativity without a bit of steel and know-how in your side. And the 17 and 18, Gustavo and Paulinho have certainly shown that. He could be a big signing for Tottenham Hotspur, Paulinho. couple of goals in this tournament as well including the important winner against uh, Uruguay in the semi-final Joe brings it forward Neymar that is ahead of him I think Neymar had got himself in an offside position oh Spain well they have been at sixes and sevens at the back today I mean in the past we just haven't seen that defense Put under too much pressure till the last couple of games in recent years but what both brazil and italy have shown is if you can get at that defense there could be a payoff and that would be a worry for spain their fans and vicente del bosco bosque rather Much easier to defend at the back when your front players and your midfield players are pressing the ball and winning it back early, which Spain have done for years now, and so have Barcelona. When they're played around, then you're going to be put under pressure. You're going to have to make good decisions as defenders, and Spain haven't done that in the last couple of games, despite keeping a clean sheet against Italy. Here's Dani Alves, tackled from behind by Navas, play on, good advantage played by the referee, comes to nothing in the end. By the way, ESPNFC.com is your source for the Confederations Cup. Highlights, match, recaps, there's more too on the ESPNFC app. And on August the 11th, watch out for a new show on ESPN2 for soccer fans everywhere. ESPNFC on TV, and it'll be six days a week too. Stuart, who could have predicted this? I don't think anybody could have predicted it. I wasn't quite sure how Brazil would approach the game in terms of where they were going to press the ball. Are they going to allow Spain to have it, or were they going to go and oh, win it back quickly? I think the crowd and Scolari made sure that the players played with an intensity, won it back quickly. But you still expect Spain to play around that pressure on occasions, and they haven't been able to do so. You see, I think people around the world who might not have seen this game, they'll see the result and say, well, it was a Confederations Cup, it's next year that really matters, all that kind of thing. They won't realise the intensity this has been played at and maybe the significance of what we've been seeing. Joe got it away. OK, you can say it's a possibly fatigued Spain. 
have a day's less rest than Brazil, but of course a lot of their players were rested for the Tahiti game. So you could say Brazil will play one more game in the in the tournament, effectively, the players anyway. Anybody that doesn't see this tournament as being a, a really good, intense tournament that we've seen here. We've seen good games, we've seen good tactical understanding from coaches, we've seen good individual performances. The way that Italy and Uruguay played the third and fourth playoff today in searing heat is another good example of what it means to these countries. Neymar still full of running. It's Navas. Up on another of his mazy runs and finds a good-looking ball to Villa. Looks to bear one and Julio Cesar. No beating him, it would seem. Good effort from Villa, typical. Was a good effort, good play from Navas as well. Went past a couple of challenges, lifted the ball to the far post. Good movement from Villa. Remember they're a player down spate. Still found a bit of space. Michael like Silva couldn't quite get tight enough, but Cesar once again read exactly what Villa was going to do there. Spain have accepted the situation now. And Brazil quite happy to play keep ball and let the clock wind down on their way to yet another victory in this competition. It's the, exactly what the Brazilian nation wanted in this troubled time for the country. Spinelli still going mad on the bench and wants his team to keep playing. He wants them to keep the ball. This player needs to stand in ovation, Paulinho. He must be absolutely shattered. He's closed the ball down. He's tracked back when players have gone beyond him. He's run forward to try and get in the box as well. Another big ovation. He too, one of the top five or six players in this tournament, I think, by common consent. Iniesta blocked off. Sandro was in the side to do that same job for Brazil for a while before he got injured at Tottenham. Might be a bit of an inquest goes on in the Spanish press about this. Navas. Still got a cross away. Ball did stay in play. Marcelo stays down. And here's Hernanes, who's recently come on, the Lazio player. Jadson seeing his first action of the tournament in the final it's only his eighth cap by the way Xavi today moves joint second for Spanish appearances with the famous goalkeeper Zubi Zareta onto 1-2-6 only Ica Casillas ahead of him I'm sure it's a game he wants to remember fondly as much of the ball as he normally does he had to dictate the play He's been chasing the ball more often than not well, this performance by Brazil is making their current FIFA world ranking of 22 look like a bit of a joke to be honest with you Spain of course at number one Brazil are one place ahead of Mali, according to FIFA. Mind you, they're not a bad side, Mali. No. They play well. Clearly. Brazil are behind Greece, Denmark and Ghana on the list. Which is headed by Spain, then Germany, Argentina, Croatia and the Netherlands. USA, in case you're wondering, at 28. What a night it's been for... Brazilian public, these Brazilian players, even better for Scolari. Everything about this game he's got right. The attacking side of the game, the way he's approached it, the spirit which the players have had, the way they've inspired the crowd, stopped Spain from playing. It's been the perfect performance. I have to say, Scolari's got it right. 
team have peaked for the Confed Cup itself. They went into the tournament with two wins in nine games, remember, and a lot of criticism ringing around Scolari's ears. And a lot of people saying this is the worst Brazilian side that they've seen for quite some while. I'm sure they'll be saying it after this match. I wonder how the bookmakers around the world might react as well with their betting on who wins the World Cup 2014. They've started the party, and it might go on for some time. Only doom and gloom on the Spanish bench. After the first game there again, see the player tracking back, winning the ball. Was Joe getting back into a midfield position? A good bit of teamwork. Sure, you have to say it. This has been a hammering for Spain. It's Danny Alves. Joe waiting in the middle. The tall player wearing the number 21 shirt. This is how Spain usually play against the other teams. Demoralise them because they keep the ball. Don't give them any time in it because they go and win it back quickly. They press it. Role reversal here. Not enjoyed it at all, Spain. It is over. Brazil are the Confederations Cup champions for the third time in a row. Trouble in the streets, turbulent times, undiluted joy on the pitch, and the belief that Brazil can bounce back to the very top of world football next year. Lots to talk about as we go to the studio at Bob Lee. Thank you, Ian. You mentioned the questions about this Brazilian side coming in. There is a Brazilian saying about football. Boys can win a match. Men win championships. This is just a championship along the way towards the world.